Hello there, Sarah Carter back on the Produce Like a Pro channel today to talk to you about automation. Today, I want to share with you five tips for utilizing automation to get the best out of it, really, and to create mixes that sound uh, a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more exciting. And these are just a few ideas that you can use automation for. And there are many more different ways to use automation. Um, but these are my five favorite ways. Automation refers to the specific control of parameters in a mix over time. The most common parameter to choose for automation is the fader. So we can bump up the level of things, pull down the level of other things so that um, there's just a, a greater sense of movement or dynamics to the track. Another parameter that's a favourite is the pan pot. So you can do some auto panning using automation. And then you can use automation to activate effects, to put, to bypass them, either the effect itself or to the um, auxiliary sends to manipulate the input into the effects you might be using in a certain way. The primary benefit to using automation and it's the key really, is that you can use it to bring out certain nuances of a track. So those are the little kind of runs and fills that I like to make the most of. I think because they're really interesting and they're a point of difference in the mix that will catch the ear of the listener. Some of the more common applications may be to push the vocal in a chorus or uh, to make the drums hit harder in a chorus. You can use it to automate any effects such as parallel processing or reverbs to bring in different textural changes throughout the mix. It's such an important part of mixing that you really shouldn't ignore it. And it's it to get the best out of it, really, you've got to be you've got to have listened to the mix multiple times. And of course, you will have during the process of the mix, you will have, but what I'm talking about here is a more um, often a more listener-like mode to get yourself into. So, tr so to try and just absorb the mix as a whole and listen to it as one body of work and just feel as if there's anything missing or if it starts to get a bit boring or just gaps where the listener isn't quite sure what they should be listening to. Uh, and that is often a subliminal effect within the listener where they may per perceive it differently, where it just, again, they may perceive it as being boring. But we really want to avoid that because at that point, when they may feel as though things are getting a bit repetitive, they're going to hit the fast forward button and uh, move to the next song in the album or, at worst, to the next song on the playlist. Listening with the ears of a mix engineer, you can pick up where there are certain elements in the mix that uh, you can just about hear, but perhaps not well enough. You can hear there's something happening, but you're just not quite sure what. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to take you through a recent mix and just show you what I did in the automation passes to help bring out certain elements of the mix to try and kind of identify what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about those little nuances um, and areas that need enhancement. So hopefully that's going to help you apply that to your next mix. There are a couple of different ways to actually uh, apply the automation depending on the equipment that you've got. If you've got a hardware controller, that's great because that means you've got a fader uh, that's touch sensitive and you'll be able to automate uh, using a physical touch, really getting hands on with the music, getting hands on with the performance. And if that appeals to you, then uh, that is a great way to go. Another way, if you haven't got an, a uh, controller, is to actually draw it in with the mouse. Now, I end up using a, a little bit of both, to be honest. The fader is great for uh, applying a finer movement, a finer sense of movement. 
So uh, I'll use it for realism on vocals and guitar lines maybe where I'm just gently pushing and pulling at the fader to give it that sense of it coming in and out of focus. I'm not sure whether that's a good analogy, but uh, just to give it a bit of push and pull. So my first tip is what I've just been speaking about, and that is to utilize those two different types of automation in order to build in a little bit more depth into the mix. And you can see that done here in this, uh, this mix where that has just had that more linear approach done to it. So my thought process is that because the solo has got more movement to it, that it's going to stand out against this more static backdrop of the tele guitar. Let's have a listen uh, so you can make up your own mind whether that has actually been the case. Okay, so I've created a group in Pro Tools so that when I apply the automation to one, it's sort of mirrored on the other. Okay, and so you can hopefully see it a little bit clearer. I've just put the two together here. So we've got the, the Tele and the Rickenbacker are on top of each other here. And we've got the fader that's on screen is relating to the Tele. And the goal here, what I'm trying to achieve is just to have the ear pick up the start of that kind of strumming within this mix behind the solo. Because it was a little bit lost when we just um, had a quick listen. So let's see if we can do that. Okay, so you got the idea there what I was trying to do and you could hear it in the mix as well. Let's just check it out. And the other thing I was trying to do was to make the biggest push on the first stroke of the first beat of each new bar. And then with the remaining strums, they weren't quite as intense as that first one. And it's OK that each push isn't quite on the on the money, so to speak. You can easily go in and just edit if you need to. But also that um, that plays into that sense of movement again because it's it's swelling at perhaps a slightly later point than it was the bar before. So um, I tend not to overthink this type of thing too much. The question is though, does that movement now take away the focus from the solo guitar? Uh, so I guess that's for you to decide. My second tip refers to vocal automation, mainly lead vocal automation. And that is to automate the vocals in batches of verses and then in batches of choruses. And the reason for doing that is to maintain consistency, verse to verse, chorus to chorus, so that you don't end up with a verse where the vocals are a little bit louder than they are in the previous verse. It's just maintaining that you're manipulating your audio memory to uh, basically just get better consistency 
with your volume automation. My third favourite thing to do is to work with transitions. And I'm talking about verse into chorus, chorus back into verse, chorus into middle eight. And what I'm looking for there is to make sure that the choruses really have a lift and are a little bit louder than the verses. And the way we do that is down on the mix bus where I've gone in, uh, if you look at the markers here on the top, the, the intro, the fader is at unity, but when we go into the verse, we drop down by minus 0.7. And then as we go back into the choruses, we're back up to unity. And that repeats. Now the second verse, didn't take it quite so quietly as the first verse. We've got more instrumentation and I wanted to maintain that energy as we we're moving through this mix. Then back into the chorus and through the solo, we're remaining at unity. But then when we get to the breakdown, we start decide to drop again by 0 0.7 and then to unity for the final chorus and the outro. So... Let's, uh, let's take a little listen to that. Let's start the intro and listen going into the verse and see if you can sense the verse getting quieter. And then into the chorus. Do you just sense that lift? Let's get rid of, let's just bring this back actually up to Unity like that. And let's listen again. See if you can sense how much more static the verse feels. There's less of a lift. You notice it more coming out of the verse one into chorus one. With that, just that little drop in fader, the chorus feels as though it really comes in um, much stronger. And it's not much, it's just 0.7. You can choose whatever you want. If you want a greater effect, obviously you could try 1 dB. So that's just a really simple trick to do uh, on your mix bus for every mix that you do. My fourth tip is to use automation to bring focus to the first phrase, the, f the b very beginning, beginning of, a, of a lyric line uh, for the listener to latch onto before bringing it back to, the, to a, perhaps a deeper, a lower level. That follows through then in that at the end of a lyric line is to push those outgoing words, those kind of long held notes or words that kind that can get lost in amongst the instrumentation at the end of a line is to then use automation to pull those back up again see whether i've done that here on this you, you, i have actually there on this verse vocal but my still ready to run. so i wanted the the n of the last word run to be heard and not lost. It's a transition point. We're moving from verse to chorus. So everything, you know, is coming in for the chorus. We just, I just wanted to make sure that that lyric was heard and just did it a bit, a little bit of a push on the fader and that worked. So then by the same token, what I was saying here, moving into verse two, the vocal starts and you can see that I've done a push on the first beginning part of verse two. Let's listen to what that is saying. 
Check out the V-dubs. And in actual fact, I think that could do with a little bit more. So, <laughs> uh, let's edit it a little bit. Let's give it another bit of a push. Now, if I hadn't done that, that check out the V-dubs would have been lost completely in, uh, in the mix. Let's just get rid of that, shall we? So use automation to push that first lyric line, that first word or couple of words so that the ear can pick it up and, and discern it within the mix. Now this isn't just reserved vocals, you can use it on any track. The key concepts I'm trying to get across here is that all you have to do is just push that initial incoming phrase, be it a, a lyric or be it a, 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 an instrument, so that the ear can latch onto it. You the automation will bring it back down to where you had it in uh, the static mix originally but all you've done is you've sent a signal to the listener's brain that hey we've got a new thing happening here and what you're trying to do is just get the that sense of recognition happening for the listener so that you can pr bring back down these different instruments to the static mix level originally and it's like a magical thing the brain identifies it and hears it as being there when in actual fact it's actually come back down and is bedded into the mix again it's a uh, it's a, a strange thing the fifth and final point that i'm going to mention is something that is often forgotten particularly in the more inexperienced mixers and that is to remember at all times what the focal element is, what the focus is for the listener at any given point in time through a mix. You've got to lead the listener through a mix. You've got to make it really easy for them to enjoy the mix and to know what they are supposed to be listening for. Now, again, I think I said this at the start, it's, it's quite a subliminal um, manipulation of the listener. What I'm talking about is as your mix is progressing through from intro to verse to chorus through all the different sections of your song middle eights breakdowns solos you've got to decide which is the focal element in that particular section of the song and with automation make sure that the listener hears it and what that will do is eliminate that sense of boredom that sense of repetitiveness that can happen and just keeps the mix exciting, keeps it moving. You're introducing new and interesting textural changes using that technique to keep the listener uh, tuned in and listening all the way to the end. We don't want them to skip onto the next song in the playlist or the next song in the album. We want them to enjoy our music and enjoy the mix. So it looks like I've done something with the piano here. You can see with automation, with volume automation, that I've just pushed little areas to help it get heard. It's in the second chorus, and the second chorus is moving into the solo, which we just listened to and worked on with the guitars, through a bridge and a breakdown section back into the third and final chorus. Let's see what's happening here, shall we? Let's go um, from the breakdown, what I've called the breakdown. Okay, so so this transition point from the outgoing breakdown into chorus three. So it's just that line I wanted to push. So it's a textural change really from the vocal, which was taking the main vocal interest of the listener 
and I wanted to change that interest to the piano. Now, another element that's actually happening there is the female vocal here at the end. And I think that whole vocal there could actually come up in volume. It's easily done in Pro Tools because you can just grab the end here. You can see with my mouse, you just grab the end and the whole volume automation line uh, is now highlighted in blue. And that means you can do a complete lift of the whole uh, automation that was previously done. So you don't have to redo the automation, which is really nice. So let's do that. So that's getting closer. Let's try again. I might give it a little bit more. Uh, let's try one and a half dB in total. That phrase is still is a touch quiet, so I'm going to take that up a little bit more, maybe a dB. You can see there that I've utilised the tip that I mentioned earlier about raising the end of the line there with the with the fader. That long held note is just decreasing in volume naturally so I've used the fader to push to keep it more audible but you see what I did there I ch changed the focus completely from the chorus lead vocal to the female lead rather than the female lead being more of a backing vocal as it was originally we brought it forward in the mix a little bit more and it's more matching now what the male lead is doing what also is happening here I can hear and remember is that we've on the the female vocal end got an automated send for a long reverb which is here so here's a textual change for the end of that last line going into the fade out of the entire song just done a push with a really long reverb to extend her already diminishing uh, vocal line there and then that brings us to the end of the mix let's take a listen to this uh, it's during the fade out I love a really long fade out I think it's to do it's just uh, more nostalgia than anything else uh, but let's uh, let's just check out what is happening here at this point So that was it. It was just a snare roll, and it was, but it was just so quiet, and I just felt as though it was such a, an, an, a really nice textural change in that fade out that I just wanted to make more of it. So it involved a a push on the snare top, and a push on the overheads left and right, and on a mono room. Uh, with the snare top and it's just listening out for little things like that that catch your ear that you like that you enjoy in the mix that you're mixing and pushing it because that's your taste and that's all the fun of mixing So thank you for watching this video. I hope I've given you a few ideas for some automation moves to try out in your next mix. The five favourite tips I talked about today were to blend two different types of automation to add to uh, that depth perception of lifting solo elements off the page a little bit more. So that's blending the static with the more dynamic movement of a fader. 
The second tip was to carry out your vocal automation in blocks of verses and choruses. So do all the verses together to maintain consistency of level and then do all the choruses in the same way. The third tip is to make the most of those transitions between verses and choruses and middle eights of your mix to build in more dynamics. And that means pulling down the fader level in the verses on your mix bus, something like anywhere really between half a dB and one dB, so that when the choruses come in, they hit with more impact. The fourth tip was to trick the brain using those little blips, those pushes on the first opening syllables or even words of a phrase to help the listener's ear latch on to that as a new interesting thing that's just happening so that you can then pull that element back down in level to its normal state within the mix yet the listener will still perceive it as being there. And then continuing on from that is to push the outgoing tales of words and phrases with the fader so that they don't get lost by the next new element that's coming in during that transition. The fifth and final tip is to be really mindful of the focal point for the listener throughout the entirety of your mix and using automation to guide the listener's ear as to what they should be concentrating on as the mix plays through. It's where you would highlight any interesting fills that fill in the gap between lyric lines like we did with the piano, for example. It would be where we would start to automate effects to use long delay throws, to use super long reverbs, again to fill in gaps so that the mix doesn't feel as though it falls flat for the listener. If it falls flat, flat for the listener, they're just going to feel as though it's a repetitive mix, it's a bit boring and they're going to skip. So that's all from me in this video talking about automation. If you want to learn more from me about mixing, all sorts of mixing tips like what you've seen today, then check out any links in the description that will point you towards my courses on the Pro Mix Academy. And thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.